This episode of Android Weekly is brought to you by Domain.com. This was my first mobile phone, and I'm sure it was many of your first mobile phones too, because at one time, Nokia dominated the mobile phone market. Now the interesting question is, what would Nokia have to do to come back today and just crush it? Now about a year ago, I asked you guys if you would be excited about an Android powered Nokia phone. And the response was strong. Because for an entire generation, the name Nokia will stir up a lot of emotion. From the iconic 3210 to the symbolic N95. The pre-smartphone years were Nokia's heyday. And a large majority of current smartphone users will be able to recall using a Nokia handset in their past. But the obvious question remains, after Apple came and invented the smartphone market, why didn't Nokia fully commit to Android instead of just dipping their toe in it? And that's exactly what happened. The company introduced the Android-powered Nokia One tablet in November 2014. However, the N1 isn't quite the Nokia device we've all come to know and love, as it's a tablet that Nokia has licensed their name to, rather than made themselves. Last week, the rumor that Nokia would fully commit to Android reared its head again, with a new report suggesting we'd see a Nokia-released new Android-powered smartphone at the beginning of 2016 when the clause in the Microsoft deal preventing it from making devices expires. However, shortly after, the company issued a statement denying any move to enter the smartphone market, but conceded that it would consider brand licensing like it has done with the N1. Looking back at Nokia smartphones in the latter stages of Symbian and the Windows Phone era, and one thing is painfully clear, Nokia's problem was always its software. Symbian's inability to develop an iPhone challenger and the failure of Microsoft Windows to capture the market. Yet Android can solve all these issues. Now for those of you who believe that Nokia's days are done, you gotta remember this. The Nokia brand name is arguably the Finnish company's biggest asset, as indicated by the 20,001 sales in just four minutes when the tablet went on sale in China. People still want to buy Nokia products. Nokia had a large part to play in the market share that Windows Phone enjoys today, and the brand is still powerful enough to likely make Nokia's return to mobile successful. Remember that marketing history lesson I gave a couple weeks ago? Nokia has to create their own category and dominate the category. Who was the first one to create the tablet category in mobile devices? It was Apple. Who dominates the tablet device market now? Apple. Who created the new category of phablets? Samsung. Who dominates the category? Samsung. So the question is, what category could Nokia create? Now this is so hard to do. Why? Because for us humans, it's really difficult to imagine needing or wanting something that we have no experience with. So for example, before Ford made the first automobile, people didn't say they wanted a new automobile. They said they wanted a faster, cheaper horse and carriage. This is why the first car wasn't called a car. It was called a horseless carriage. So for a while, there was just one type of automobile until eventually you had different categories of automobiles. You had a van, and then boy, that opened up a whole new set of categories. You had minivans, passenger vans, cargo vans, then a truck, half-ton truck, full-ton truck. And before you know it, we got Jeeps and endless amounts of categories. Nokia has to create a new category of mobile devices. What could that be? I have an idea. Now, some people may argue that Nokia needs to make a business phone to replace the BlackBerry market, so to speak, or a prosumer tablet, a tablet that begins to replace your laptop, for example. But I think they need to go one step further than that. You see, there is one painfully obvious problem with all smartphones. Although they have opened the world to us in one respect, they've also shrunk our world to five inches. You're out to dinner with your family, everyone's like this. You're walking down the street, everyone's like this. Box is still stuck under his car. So who knows how long he was driving with that box under. People even driving their bloody cars. <laughs> so now imagine a piece of technology that gives us the power and access of this, but allows us to open up to the immediate world around us. Now I know what you're thinking, you're thinking, Jace, Google already tried this with Google Glass. No, no one should have Google design hardware. It looks like it was designed from someone from Revenge of the Nerds. 
never been out with a girl before. We need something that's both powerful and discreet, that's inobtrusive, that doesn't create a barrier between me and the immediate world around me. So the question for you is, and I want to read them in the comments below, what category could Nokia create and dominate? Think outside the box. I look forward to reading. Now I'm a big fan of Jeremy Shoemaker, otherwise affectionately known as Shoe Money. And I was listening to a podcast of his where he says what I said last week. He will not choose the name for a new business unless he can get the dot com. Why? Because no domain name extension tells your story with the same level of trust as a .com or .net domain name. .com and .net domain name extensions inject credibility into your online presence. And who doesn't want more credibility? You can save 15% on domain name and web hostings when you use our coupon code ANDROID at domain.com checkout. Don't forget, 15% off when you use our coupon code ANDROID. When you think domain names, think domain.com. So I wanted to point out, Mr. Joe Hindi, that I noticed that not only did you not buck up and be a man and eat the fruit, but you have not responded to my challenge. What's going on, Mr. Hindi? I'm waiting. You guys know the drill, here, here, down in the comments, and my brother's over here. I shall see you next week on Android Q&A.